and <laughs> clamped the back of the transmission. And I had to fucking wrestle it out of place. For a person who's 215 pounds, can actually eat a 40 piece McNugget and it actually works out to your macros. I forgot to move the bucket that oh I put to catch the transmission fuck. fluid, pissing out in the back of the transmission fluid. So when the tow truck down, we're pushing off the ramp. All I hear is crunch. I just wanna know, who do you think is scarier, me or you? Don't let me derail you. No, you're good. You're, you're good. Kind of piping me up. And I'm I was piping doing you. it right now. No, if I could blush. I'm I blushing. Just, three, two, one, and go. Hey everyone, welcome to the Big Man's Commander Podcast. I'm your host, as always, Matthew J. Lapore, and I am on with, with Gio Vani Gorna. <laughs> That stone cold smooth, brother. <laughs> Take two. <laughs> hey, don't 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 let don't let them know that. It's already out there. That's crazy. You know that little figure right in front of the camera? Yeah. It's going in. What? Oh yeah. Oh, that can a man have some sacred nah. off screen time. Nope. You out here including fucking bloopers, man. You gotta include bloopers. Oh. <laughs> Am I drunk? God. Who's fucking up this time? Oh man. You. Anyways, mm -hmm. Geo. Yes. A lot's changed since you've been last on, right? I, 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 yeah. A lot's changed. A lot has changed. New job. Yep. Got a bike. Yep. Fitness goals. Uh-huh. Looking good. Oh, thank you, man. You're welcome, man. You're welcome. Credit where credit's due, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. It was a lot simpler than I thought it would be. Yeah. What was this? Literally, guys, if you want to get in shape quick, do you want to drop pounds and fit into that winter jacket that you bought on discount last year, but it was a size too small. Do you want to get six pack, six pack, six 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 pack abs in, in two months, two days, and sixteen weeks? Well, fuck you. I can't help you with that. But what I can tell you is time and consistency equals goals met. What, did you just do an infomercial? I did. Uh, subscribe to my uh, one hundred and ninety dollar uh, Cool Breeze Academy. I'm help. I'm a coach now. What? I'm an OnlyFans model. What? Everything's changed, dude. How? I have a Lamborghini. Just out of curiosity, how would one All subscribe to bullshit. the OnlyFans? What? What? All of that was bullshit. Okay. No OnlyFans. <laughs> I, yo, listen, listen, listen. Real rap. Would you subscribe to your homie's OnlyFans? Yeah, for sure. What? Yeah, support the homie. You trying to be in productions? Are you just sure? A word? A word? Okay. Listen, I've been wanting to start an OnlyFans for a while. Here, what would you call it? Hear me out. Right? Big man's, uh... Big man uncensored? Big man uncensored. Especially, uh... I have it in my, uh... If you guys look in my, my Instagram bio, or TikTok, whatever the fuck you guys want to look at... Um, I want to I wanna have that one like explicit page, 18 plus, like all the other like women and guys have. The only reason I say that is I'm not looking for like attractive women, wherever it is, to like look at me. I just need that one random guy in Dubai to hand me like a million dollars and watch my content. I'm, you know what I'm saying? Like, make money how you make money. I'm going to be honest, man. I think more people will watch it to see the female actor rather than you. Because well, the there's camera, some weirdos out there, though, bro. The camera angle wouldn't be, you know, her POV. Oh, uh, true. It would be. There's POVs of the girl. Like, of like. Uh, you watched? No. I did watch one of the videos like, like two, three years ago. I watched one of the videos. I'm like, what the fuck? It's like girls' POVs. It was on like, whatever, like. like I think it was Pornhub or some shit like that. And I, like, watched the first minute. I'm like, yo, this is some wild shit. Yeah, I I bet. That's a whole different side of the of the mirror that I'm guessing you're used on. <coughs> Maybe. I don't know now. Well, see, you know what's crazy is what I learned about, like, that industry is, like, it's not like you watch it, like, you watch, like, whatever, however long it is, right? Yeah. And there's, like, breaks in between. You have a, you have a fluffer. You have... <laughs> You have wait, like five. Wait, you have a. You wait, have a. What the fuck is fluffer? So okay, so right. So like, let's say you're doing a porn, right? Um, whatever, whatever, whatever. Okay, like 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 a, like a regular movie hmm. or short film or whatever it is. You hear cut. Okay, everyone breaks it up, right? Someone keeps the dude, you know, aroused, keeps the woman wet, you know, 
all that kind of shit. And uh, um, as they're kind of continuing, yeah, they do different positions, whatever it is. Like, it's not just like a one take situation. So you it's, watch the behind the scenes on. on I saw this. I, no, no, no. I saw this like YouTube video. Like they they explained it, and it's like there's like six people in the room, and like makes sense. people are eating. There's a director. There's producers. There's a there's microphones. There's cameras. Like it's, it's legit. It's a legit filming crew. Yeah, it's like UFC, but schmutt, schmutt. Yeah, I didn't like know it was like this whole thing where it's like you might see a scene, and then like a, the, the, you won't you don't notice like the cut, but like they cut into like different parts of it. I'm like, yo, what the fuck? Like, it is like a like it is a actual like industry, dude. Duh. Like, there's a you know that? there's a well I knew that but like it's there's the there's like an actual it's the world there's oldest a, profession yeah there's a script there's a there's this there's that there's yeah, this I don't there's... think I don't think many people are watching for the plot no one watched it for the plot you sure well, okay I like to like whatever I get into right I like to hear the situation explain that in full detail for me okay let's let's say it's like the naughty neighbor finds the the unwitting, like, 21-year-old, right? So oh, are you my- just watching schmutz about fantasies that you currently have in your head? Yeah. No, everyone else does that, right? I, I get, maybe. I don't know. You're making it sound weird that it is. Hey, look, hey, whatever people have behind closed doors, man, I'm mm-hmm. fully for you. I'm f- I, I will support you to the best of me not seeing it. I'm, I'm in your corner. But. But. There's some weird shit out there, man. There's some weird stuff. No, for sure. Like, you know what's b- like pretty big right now? What? Like, like midget porn. <laughs> no, listen. I, again, I found this on through a TikTok. It was like, oh man, you got you got to delete that fucking app. No, listen, listen. You got to. Well, see, okay. So here's the thing, right? I've you know, I don't. They, they only show you shit you you search. No, no, no. So so, you so must there's have there's this guy like baby incognito. alien. It's like this guy baby alien and this other dude. They're both like small people, right? I think that's I, the wait, how, do, how do you go from midgets to saying midgets fifteen seconds ago? Now you're saying small people. I don't know. Stick to stick to stick to okay. one. But like, so here's the thing, right? They have they have an impairment to their own body, right? And like these beautiful women are banging them for like clout, right? And like, there's now this like uh, this beef between like this, this guy Baby Alien and this other dude. I don't know his name. And like these women are going back and forth between these two guys. And to us, like normal, normal people, we're like, "What the fuck is going on?" But these girls are just doing it for clout. They're just doing it for views and sex. And you ever follow those meme pages on like no. Instagram? No, 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 no meme pages. No meme pages. What do you mean? What do you do with your time? I, I, I work. I work out. I hop on the bike, listen to music, play guitar, write down my journal, learn new languages. That's so let me sorry, so, 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 whoa. Let me ask you a question. Go ahead. When it came to the fitness thing, what got you like back into like that full swing? I think I don't think I was ever in the full swing. This might sound petty as fuck, but really for a long stretch of time, the only reason I was going to the gym was really honestly cuz I saw Cody. Your viewers know Cody, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that I saw what Cody did in the gym. Remember when he when we first met him on the scene? He kind of looked like Jonah Hill. <laughs> yeah. With like a little bit of a longer neck, and like a little penguin walk. Yeah. And then he turned into the Cody we see today. Yeah, yeah. And he worked very hard for that, yeah. Yeah, he did. And the back of my head was like, there was a point in time where I'm, I was stronger than him. Yeah. And then now, there was a point where I was sitting there. I was like, I don't know if, I, I don't know if I'm stronger than him anymore. Like, Cody, like, the little bro, who's close enough in age, he's just like the bro, but he's still kind of like the little bro. Yeah. I'm like, if I had a little brother, I'm the youngest, if I had a little brother and I knew he was stronger than me, uh, I might feel a certain way about that. Yeah. So then I hit the gym again, then I'm like, I can't let him get stronger than me. And then that kind of morphed to, well, uh, let's see how far I can push this thing, see how far I can get. And then it was just like... Well, let's go every day. And then that turned to, okay, I'm actually starting to have fun doing this. Because before, lifting was never fun. Yeah. For me. Especially for like in, in like football and wrestling and all that kind of stuff. 
it was a chore. It was like you had to do this thing. You'd had blocks out where yeah. you'd have to, okay, skills lifting this day, linemen are lifting this day, and it was like you had to do it. And the workouts were fucking whack. Yeah. Like, I can't do a fucking power clean. My body Yo, don't work like that. You know what's wild, though, is it wasn't until I started doing all this and getting really serious and like competing on like a high level where I was like, whatever they were doing is like so incorrect. Mm-hmm. Like, I remember... I found, remember those like shoes we used to have? Oh, yeah. I still so, have them. Yeah, so I found them like a year and a half ago. I was like cleaning out, I was just deep cleaning my room at my dad's at the apartment, right? And I found it. I'm like, why were we doing that? And like in my head, mathematically, it just didn't make sense. It's like you had progression weeks and then you're maxing out like every like three, four weeks. Yep. Why were we doing that? Yeah, nobody knows. That, that was never fun. No. So I just didn't do it. I guess I was just naturally maybe gifted with strength. I remember the first time I hit the bench press. I was, what, 14? Did 135, 145, 155. Just like, I guess this is this is weight. I guess I can do this. Then I was like, oh, I'm stronger than most of y'all. Yeah. Good enough. Yeah. See, it wasn't until, like, when I switched from, like, the Y or, like, the LA Fitness. Oh, the Y days. Because, like, I didn't realize until I started lifting at, like, a, at like a gym gym, right? Shout out the gym in Tanline Studio. Gym gym. Yeah. Owned by gym. Gym. Called yeah. gym. <laughs> yeah. That's a gym. Yep. Um, To where, like, say, like, if you're benching, like, 315, yep. everyone's doing that. Yep. Everyone's doing that. And I'm like, whoa, I'm not... Because like I I found like like my records and like Ben's records are really I, like they're still there at Springford. Really? Yeah. Like I Mike Mike Mayano the 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 young kid that was dishwashing and you know doing football. Mikey mayonnaise. Mikey mayonnaise. Mikey he, Mayo. He was like yeah my records are still there. And like, um, I was like you know I was a big fish in a small pond, and then I started like deadlifting. Okay, like like, like mind you this past comp that I did right, I pulled eight thirty. Damn. But like. The two guys that beat me, one was my coach, the other guy uh, is a brother of the guy that, of the one implement we used that he created. They pulled 920. Damn. Yeah. You're, you're no longer, you're, you're now a big fish in the ocean. Wouldn't it scale though? Wouldn't you be a small fish in the ocean at that? Yeah, whatever, whatever it is. Like you're a small, small fish in a bigger pond now. But. Essentially, it's like you realize that 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 transitional period where you're like, okay, you have to work harder now. You have to be doing this and doing that and doing this and doing that. And I think you you've probably seen that now. You're a power build, right? Yeah, yeah. Holy, I forgot the name of the gym. Yeah, and they power and they build. use and they use calibrated ghost plates there too. I don't know what the fuck that means. They've they've used me for some clout stuff uh, a little bit back, but yeah, like they're they're pretty good over there, and like they have a nice facility, but. It wasn't until I started going to these gyms to train the different implements that I was like, wow, I'm not as strong as I thought I was. Or you'll have people like who um, helped me out in a lot of my fitness journey with like Andrew Hannes. He's, he like uh, continental cleaned and pressed 275 and he was like 190. Yeah. Yeah. It, it gets fun. Yeah. Which I never thought it would. Mm hmm. It's like, wow. Like, Holy shit, I'm seeing muscles I didn't know existed. Mm-hmm. I'm taking a shower. But I was putting uh, soap on my leg. And I'm like, what the fuck is this little fucking muscle over here bulging? Yeah. I lo- didn't get it. Mm-hmm. And then, like, the diet thing I kind of got down. Yeah. I figured, I figured a lot of shit out. You know what's funny about that, too? It wasn't until, like, maybe like a year and a half ago to where, like, the diet thing started making sense. Where, like... You can kind of eat what you like. Like, there's been this whole thing, and you see it a lot in people who, right now, who are around like 50, 40, 40s to like mid 50s, to where they're like, Oh, I can't eat bread. I can't eat this. I'm like, You can, but there's this thing called macros, right? Like, you take, you know, like if you want to go on like a, like a lean bulk, or do you want to like be like strong and get leaner? Okay, you're going to do <clears throat> your protein's going to be. 0.8 or 0.9 times your body weight, <clears throat> then you're going to take your body weight times. Like for me, it's times 15, but for them, I'd be like times 12, times 13. And then you're now you're in a deficit. You're going to take your carbs, your, your, your fats. And it's like you start doing the, this math and you're like, oh, 
uh, what, what is it? Uh, thermal dynamics, therm, thermodynamics, right? It's basically it's sure. it's how much output you are putting. Like, okay, say you run like a you run a mile. You burn, let's just for shits and giggles, let's say four hundred calories. Yeah, but you consume in a day a thousand calories, right? Which you shouldn't do, but you you essentially ate a total of 600 calories but your amount of calories you need to con- to keep your body stable your mere maintenance is a yeah. thousand so now you're under like you, it's all this it's all it's just math so like a, like um for a person who's 215 pounds can actually eat a 40 piece McNugget and it actually works out to your macros yeah and it's wild like once you kind of figure that out you realize you have that kind of security but then in, in, on the flip side you go okay I have 3200 calories in this day yeah am i gonna eat this big mac which is like 820 calories a shit ton of carbs a shit ton of fats and not as much protein or am i gonna go and eat four eggs which is six grams per egg ew fucking eggs suck yeah but there's six grams of protein per egg know, but dude, i'd rather get my protein eating fucking fish eyeballs but eggs smell horrible i don't disagree with you but I'm, what i'm saying is you start looking at that kind of stuff. You start piecing it together. You go, okay, I can eat this and I'll get more out of this. Like, uh, um, not Mendelssohn. Who was it? He he died in the last couple of years. Big bodybuilder. He was like, Rich I don't... Piana? Yeah. 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 Ring. Yeah. Um, he, there's a there's there's a there, there's a video of him like eating like rice and eggs and stuff like that. And he goes, I don't eat to to enjoy it. I eat to fuel my body. Mm-hmm. Right, and that's where it's like, okay, if we're gonna go to Wawa and get a sizzly and like a drink or whatever you're gonna get, you go, okay, X amount of calories, X amount of carbs, X amount of protein, and then you go, now my body's fueled. Like you need carbs to go out your day. Eh. You see, some of someone like who's for me for you, yes, someone like you, you might not eat as much carbs, but you still need it to fuel your body. Ah, no, you do. No, that's that's. See that that's the thing though is like you you need that to fuel your body. You need it to be able to okay, if, if I gotta pull a seven hundred deadlift, I I'm, I need those carbs, I need that protein, I need those macros to get me to that seven hundred deadlift that day. That'll work. I think there's so many ways. The human body is so adaptable and unique and fucking amazing. Yeah. What's worked for me, and I've tried a bunch of them, but what worked for me is something called a protein sparing modified fast. Uh it's like that keto shit. Yeah. It really it dumbs it down. It makes it simple. So I'm like, okay, what's stopping me from eating right? It's like, ah, I don't feel like cooking. Eh, I don't feel like meal prepping. So I'm like, ah. All right, so what do I like to eat the most? It's protein. Sweet. What, like, eating regimen can I do? Just focus solely around protein. I found this one. I don't know how the fuck I found it. Are you familiar with the protein spring modified fast? I've heard of it. I don't know much about it. I'm pretty ignorant on that topic. Basic it, is yes. this. Uh, you're split into three categories based on body fat. Okay. Category one's like you're lean, like <clears throat> your bodybuilder. You've been at the shit for a minute. Your body fat percentage is like is less this like than an, 10%. Le, like an endomorph to an... No, fuck oh. no, probably not. Category two is like your average dude who's like 20% body fat. You know, he's a little, he's a little chubby side, maybe a little skinny. Category three is your big boys. Yeah. So, based off of that, you would take, you know, similar way, your lean body mass, 0.9% of that is the amount of protein you eat. So, you eat that much amount of protein. You are allowed as much healthy vegetables as you can possibly want. All that's good to go. Like, low-carb low, low carb vegetables, like your leafy greens, all that shit to get your nutrients for that. Your fat, keep it at a low. And what that tallies up to is you're eating, like, a pound plus of protein, which clean protein, like a pound and, like, a half, it's a lot of fucking food. Yeah. And then vegetables, like, spinach, kale, all that bullshit, you cook enough of that, low in calories, really fucking filling. You keep the fat slow, just keep those calories down a little bit, I'm good for the day. Yeah. And... That like they, oddly enough, that tallies out to like less than a thousand calories, and I just I just eat once a day. Shit works. I don't recommend that for everybody. Definitely not something you want to be on for a while. Yeah. But for me, that just works. Well, see, and, that, and that's the whole thing too. Is it's like you have to be able to feel your body because people always think, and I hear it a lot where they're, they're like, 
oh, you, I, I go to the gym to build muscle. I go to the gym to get leaner. I'm like, no, dude, you go to the gym to break down muscle. Mm-hmm. I, I've said this a million times on these podcasts where it's like, they go, oh, I'm going to go to the gym and get big. I'm like, you are going to the gym in theory to get big, but you have to eat well, eat big, eat properly to mm-hmm. see drastic gains. What is it, like abs come from 90% diet or something? Yeah, it's like, it's like, it's like, that. they always say like abs are made in the kitchen. Yeah. Because... You can go and do a million ab workouts, right? And you'll see progress. You'll get stronger. You'll build a better core. But the thing is, is like, if Dude, you're not eating like properly, motherfucker. Yeah, like, but if you're not eating properly, your body is just gonna uh, exacerbate the fat on your body. Yeah. It's it's gonna hold it in. And then there's this um, uh, not cortisol. What is it? There's this like stress hormone. Insulin. No. Uh, I think it's cortisol. I think it is cortisol. I could be wrong though. I'll definitely get fact checked. You're right. It's cortisol. Um, trust, trust, trust. But basically, it's like if you're not eating enough protein or you're not eating at all, you're trying to you're you're not doing what you're doing. Like you're actually properly eating. You're like, oh, I have to I have to not eat today. Mm-hmm. But you do this massive workout. You burn all these calories. Your body is burning off so much stuff throughout the day, trying to rebuild from what you just took out of it and just broke down. It's going to be like, oh my gosh, I'm starving. I need to keep this on my body. Yeah. So it's not going to take away the fat. It's going to keep it on your body because you have this stress hormone in your body, cortisol, which is holding it on. And it's like, no, you, because like, you'll, you, I'm sure you found that you're actually probably eating more than you thought you were before this whole situation. Fuck no. Really? No. A lot of people that I know that are, that are like, like that cut, like, um, I know a, a lot of guys like Cameron Barry, Brandon Bada. Cam and I forget his last name. They're eating more when they're like cutting or whatever it is. Like yeah, they eat less than they're cutting for their shows. But when they're building trying to get bigger and they're still saying lean, staying lean, they're eating a fuck. They're eating like six times a day. No, not and they're case. they're under, they're under their 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 deficit of like four hundred calories, five hundred calories. Yeah, that's of their like, maintenance. That's a lot of food for that specific type. But yeah, I'm just only I'm just trying to. Trying to get cold this winter. This is, there's been a lot of winters. I ain't, I ain't been cold yet. Yeah. I ain't rocking shorts. I get cold when I sleep. Have okay. you ever had that feeling? No. It's, it's I odd. like being cold when I sleep, though. Like, like even now, it's, what, it's 32 degrees outside right now? Ugh. I keep yeah. the windows open. I have to be cold. Fucking Just weirdo. Like, I can't do it. I like I have Because your body has to reach, like, a certain core temperature where it's like, okay, I can sleep now. If I'm too hot, I'll wake up or I'll be up. Oh for yeah, you probably want to, you know, fucking go to sleep sweaty. But I'm like, not even saying like, sweaty. Like, because... Hold the window open. Yeah, you no. letting all the fucking air out, man. No, I have to be cold. I have to be cold. I have to be. Like, like, like. You sleep with socks on? No. You sure about that? Yeah, I'm not a loser. Huh? No. So all those socks slither on the floor in your room. No, they're in the laundry right now. You they're wash them. Laundry. Good. Okay. All the crusty ones that you got <laughs> sprung about somewhere watching watching Baby no. Alien or whatever the fuck his name was. No, dude, like... You don't wear those to sleep. No, no. I have to be cold, dude. You sleep with cold feet? Yeah, No, they're under a cover. I, I only sleep with my comforter. Really? Yeah. You know what? Somebody taught me all the difference between all of the uh, different fabrics and accessories to bedding. I forgot all of them. They're all complicated. So you have your pillow. Yeah. You have your throw pillow. What? I, see? I'm fucking struggling here. You have your throw, right? Oh, no. I, I know this. My girlfriend throw, knows this. And then you have your other type of pillow. Then you have your comforter. Then you have your like, your bed sheet. A sheet. And then you have your, uh, what's the stretchy shit that goes around the mattress? Oh, the, yeah. the, the fitted sheet? Sure. And like all that together. And I'm over here sleeping just on a fucking mattress with like a little Ziploc bag around it. <laughs> no, dude. I, I Keep it. And then a fucking... Is it a blanket or a comforter? Please, somebody let me know. I have like a comforter. It's like it's like the well, well, what well, you see on the top a, of it. Ain't that just a fucking blanket? To me, it's a to me it's a it's a comforter. It's a blanket. I don't use regular blankets. I just use the, the 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 comforter, the sheet that's on my bed that's fitted on my bed, and a pillow. I'm pretty sure it's an Amazon essential pillow. Those are comfy. They are comfy, they are comfy. and they're cheap. <sighs> it's it's like twenty two dollars for like four of them. Mm. Dude, they're so good. How many pillows do you sleep with? I I sleep on one, but I have like three only because my girlfriend likes to have a lot of pillows. So you just a one pillow type of dude. one pillow guy. If I had it my way, I just have my comforter, my pillow. That's it. What about you, dude? Do you have one pillow? I got like twelve. I can't do it. 
I, I don't know how to throw pillows away. Well, no, I don't throw them away. But like, I had pillows from legitimately when I was six, still in my room. Uh, see, see, when I when I moved here, it's, it's those brown pillows that are the most comfortable. Yeah. See, I learned that like, because my thing is, is I don't like my head being up all, like like high, but I like having some like you know. Some support. Some support. You know what yep. I'm saying? Like, those memory foam pillows, I don't bang with. Yeah, nah. Because it gets, your fucking head just starts sinking. And you're mm-hmm. fucking, you're like, ugh. You gotta, like, squish it up, and then it just goes down again. You yep. squish it up, it goes down again. It's, it, yeah. Yeah, I can't, I can't, I can't do it. Sleep like a fucking caveman, man. <sighs> yeah, I have to be cold. Like okay, let me, let me ask you a question. Go ahead. When you go to bed, right? Let's say tonight. When, when, when we're done this, you're gonna go to bed. Do you have your one pillow, or do you sleep with like five? Uh, hmm. It's one main pillow you put the head on, right? Yes. And then you take the other pillow and you put your your head on it. Okay. And you get one pillow, just like just to have about, just in case like this one ain't working. Okay. And then you just knock the fuck out. No, dude. I ha- I just have one pillow. When, I- when I'm ready for bed, I turn- put, my- put my phone away, turn over, lay on my back, put my head on the pillow, and I'm out. That's it. Which is how you're supposed to do it. Yeah. Like, which is another thing about this, this fucking working out shit that's great. Is that I wake up at 5 o'clock, out the house by 5.30, work out for two hours, head to work. And there's no sitting at my there's no sitting at my job. It's like straight walking. Either I'm moving shit to different companies, like lifting drywall, lifting cabinets up steps, like delivering shit. Then I get home. Then I eat. By eight o'clock, I'm dead tired. Yeah. And then I hit the sheets. Like there's something so beautiful about going to home, going home exhausted physically, that just makes sleep so much better. I see what you're saying. So I'm it's there. like. There's no point in fucking around now. Ain't no point scrolling. Motherfucker, I gotta sleep. I gotta be up in five hours. See, I'm different in the regard where I have to, like, find a way to turn my brain off. I've tried reading. Editing has to get done, so I do that anyways. Mm. But, like, I feel like my brain is always on 100 the whole day. You know what I'm saying? And you've been there. You're running around. You're getting this. You're cooking this. You're prepping this. You're doing whatever, 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 whatever. Then I come home and all I want to do is just like watch a few funny videos. I tried reading, editing. Uh, my brain's constantly spinning on what to do here. Got to put this here. Move this to this and this to that. But then, like for me, I have to, I have to find a way to like numb my brain and then knock the fuck out. Like when I'm like watching like a video mm. or like I'm on Facetime and I'm like, I'm like I know I'm like it's time. I don't know how you so, so so okay so you come home yeah you eat yeah you shower yeah uh-huh. you go to bed yeah that's it that's really it you don't have to like of course in those gaps I'm either <laughs> practicing some fucking hobby I want to pick up again like languages or guitar or reading writing and then I kind of have like a block hour for that okay that I may or may not get to depending on how fucking tired I am and then I just hit the sheets. Interesting. Not really. I think that's just. I think this is normal now. I feel most people nowadays will do what I do. Like they'll come home, they'll watch a show or scroll social media, and then fall asleep. Now it's become socially not as accepted because they're like a blue light and like you know you got to turn your brain off. But I feel like I'm constantly always at a hundred, where I need to bring myself down a little bit. And then I can go to bed. I think this is what alcohol is for. I think you should, like, s- <laughs> just fill up a glass, bro, and chug it and go to sleep. <sighs> Fuck it. What do you guys save your kidneys for? <sighs> See, be honest. What do you think our life expectancy is? Right now? Right now. I currently. think I, I, th- I think I make... How long, how long is Matthew Joseph Laporte going to last? I think, I, like, 35, 40. I think, I, you know what? I give you, like, a solid... 52. <sighs> Excuse me. I, I, 52 is a reasonable number. I don't want to live past like 40. Why? I just... 
I feel like things just are going downhill for you. Because, like, okay, everyone that Only I... Only if you fucked up for the previous 40 years. All I'm saying is, right, is, like, you see it. No matter if... Like, you have to be some David Goggins shit to where you're, like, 40... Going into your mid-40s where everything's going great. Right, I feel like everyone always says you're just at a, you're at a downward slope I mean, past I your thirties. I think 30s. you only see it, see it going great, but I think he's like talked about like, hey, there's a lot of shit I just don't want to do. And you do it anyway. That gives people hope. Maybe. I think I think there's just there's a point where you just have to be like. I think I think he's a special case. People like him are special cases to where they had dreams, they achieved it, and now they're kind of like on the the downhill. Like they reached the top of the mountain, right? Yeah. How old is he right now? I don't fucking know. I think I know what every old black guy's, every old know. black dude's age is. I do. He's 43 years old. I'm sorry. I knew it. I, I knew it. Okay. I think once you hit that, like, okay, this is what I wanted to achieve in life, and then you reach the, what's the crest? Yeah. The, top of the mountain? Yeah. Like the crest? Something like that? You You overcome the crest, and then... You're on the downslope of that mountain of, I guess, whatever you deem your success in life to be. And it's like, well, I kind of have to find something else to do. And then you go find a fucking other mountain to hike up. I think people's lack of dreams, or maybe not lack of dreams, but lack of the drive to achieve what they want to in life is kind of what leads to, like, a lot of people's problems. Like a downfall. Yeah. Like, like what was your dream growing up? I don't think I really necessarily what had did little Matt want to be? You had a dream. Don't bullshit me. I wanted to be in like the military. I wanted to be in the like the navy. Okay. What stopped you? What's stopping you now? If I don't you were think, like, I don't think there's really anything stopping me. I think it's more just like my passions have changed. Okay. My what's outlook your dream on life currently, right now, what's your dream to do? To be the best chef I could possibly be. Okay. What steps are you going to get then? Well, going to school. Okay. Do that. Right, I'm working under some pretty cool people to learn how to do a lot of the stuff that I can engage with now. We got YouTube Academy. You learn on YouTube that. Academy. Yeah, I, I'm always testing. What's stuff the newest out dish you made? The newest dish, chicken piccata. Piccata, however you fucking say it. Huh. Um, okay. But like, there's there, there's a really cool Mexican stew that you do. It's where it's like, uh, like like there's a whole bunch of shit. But like, what about you? You're you're now like, let's say you're you're 18 out of high school, like. What was your biggest thing that you wanted to be in? I know you wanted to be like a cop for a while. Yeah, being a cop, going in the military too. I don't know. I guess we were just a bunch of shit kids, you know, who just enjoyed shooting the fuck out of each other with airsoft guns. There was being outside, and it was like, holy shit, this a place you can get paid to do this? You know what's awesome? You know what's wild? Uh, I went to Dick's today. They don't have airsoft guns. They don't don't have have hunting. Yeah, it's weird. They 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 got rid of all of that kind of stuff. I think there's one left near Pottstown that still sells guns. I don't know. I guess I get why they stopped doing it, but I mean, there's there's like five gun stores between us and that. So you can yeah. probably stop to and grab a gat if you needed to. Which it, make you have to go shooting with us sometimes. I know. I want to. I want to get a gun. I want. I want to get it soon too. I was looking at a what kind of gun you want to get. You want to get a little twenty two. You can put in your no, nah, dude. I want to. I, I want like a Glock nineteen and the brown vans that you got. My brown. Yeah, they're not brown. The hell is fuckers are brown. I like. I like them. They're they're flat. I feel the ground. They look like every lint filter I cleaned out of my dryer. Listen, just listen. a whole amalgamation of just colors of just. Ugh. It looks like dirty snow. Your veins look like dirty snow. Listen, all I'm saying is the. Well, I, well, funny enough, the first night that I got them, the first day that I got them, you spilled fucking cherry juice on I it. I did. I spilled. I spilled a. The moonshine. Moonshine cherries. cherry, right on it. We went to fucking. We were at Villanova. Villanova. Damn moonshine. I was good. pissed. I was so mad. I remember I, I got them. I was so cool. My I got Vans. I'm 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 ballsy lit. to get white shoes. I love I love white shoes. I don't know. I just think like I don't know. White shoes are white shoes. I think are cool as shit. My only issue is is like the problem is I'm pretty active in my days, or like if I go if I take a walk or if I do whatever. Don't give me that fucking look. You take walks? Yeah. Bullshit. Swear on my life. <laughs> on my life. That don't mean shit. You pick something else. Prime example. Mr. I only got to a fucking 42. 
You gotta pick something else. Okay. You don't go and watch. Prime example, how I, prime example, prime example, how I fuck my vans up. When I, I'm pretty sure you were there, we were we were had we were at uh, we were with the uh, Ryan McLaughlin and all them. we watching that fight. We went across to go to his uncle's house. Yeah, I wasn't there for that. Oh, well, we did, and we had to go through yards, and I fucked them up. I ate shit. I wasn't paying attention, and I guess I hit like a like a, like a dip or like a like a wet spot, and then I fell down, and like I think I was wearing these pants, or something else, and I was I was dirty, bro. I I was muddy. Oh. Rookie mistake. You were you you were there. I swear you were there. Never been to Ryan's crib. What? Never. You must have brought somebody else. No. Maybe Gordon. No. Maybe Gordito was there for you. Gordon was there one time. Yeah. I I I, I, I him and Luke. Oh. Yeah. Oh, Lucas. So Kick you him. went from wanting to be in the Navy to being a chef. Yeah. Why? What the fuck made you want to be a chef? I think I th- I think what happened was is like. You got thrown into a job. I got thrown into a job. Then what did you think? That was the only thing you found could do? out. I actually like it a lot. That I'm pretty good at it. You like it? Okay. You really like it? I like different aspects about it. What do you like? My position makes it hard for me to like it. Yeah. But when I'm doing fine dining, working on weddings, doing meet the chefs, doing funerals, doing, doing. <laughs> you like doing funerals? Not like it's a okay. Morbid. It is morbid, but I'm saying like there is a there is a esque of. Making black and chicken for uh, for cremated people, just to Not celebrate the cause. And chicken. That's black crazy. and chicken sounds serious. No, listen, like there's there's an esque of like for weddings, right? You have two hundred plus people, right? There what are. What joy do you get from it, though? You make something cool. Yeah. Okay, you, you've you've done it. You you've made cool shit. You want to dev want to try it. You're excited about it, right? But now you do it on such a big scale on a big event, something that's gonna be. A notable situation in someone else's life, right? People from different sides of their families are coming here to eat and to see this venue and to be entertained. And you are a big part of it. You always go, okay, how many times have you had banquets? And you're like, we're, we're, we're going to go eat. Oh, the food's trash. Oh, the food's good. Right? And then you think differently. I remember of, when the food's good. I only remember when the food fucking sucks. Yeah, see, that's the thing. Is... You get to create something that's so cool for people to enjoy and eat and see. Like, because they always say people eat with their eyes, right? Yeah. Then if the food's good, you go, oh, this is going to be great. You're looking at it. You're seeing this nice slab of meat on your on your, on your plate. <clears throat> Potatoes or whatever it is you're looking at. Veggies. Then you eat it. You're like, oh, this is pretty fucking good. No, I can eat it. How many times have you cooked something and you're like, oh, I want everyone to try this? I hate it. I, hate, I don't like cooking for people. You like cooking for yourself? You've made some cool dishes. That's the thing. I like, if it's just for me, I I kind of enjoy it. Because in my brain, I'm like, I got to tweak this, I got to tweak sure. that. Sure. When I cook for other people, I know it's good. But in the back of my head, it's like, this might be the worst thing I'll ever give somebody. And I can't have that. Why? I don't know. In the back of my head, it's like, damn, if I cook a meal that's fucked up. I don't want to have you know put somebody in the pressure of sitting there like eating my fucking salty ass fucking French onion soup and then being like, oh dude, this is all good. You want to know some wild shit? What's wild? That's gonna live in my brain for the rest of my life. What's it? Which makes me want to make amazing food. You guys were helping me out with the alternator, huh? Yeah. Holy! Um, You know that was a year ago, right? Like on the day that happened, November sixteenth. Wow. A year past. Yeah. You know what's crazy that I also didn't think about too, is you remember, remember when my car went down? What what time? When? That was almost two years ago, and it was on a Sunday. It was almost two this Sunday, mm. and then it was one, two, three. It was on like a Wednesday, so two years and two days ago, my car went down. Mm-hmm. Because it was Friendsgiving, right? Yep. Had my car, drove around, and then it was like a Wednesday. You didn't have to work or anything like that, or you did or something like that. And I brought Kevin home because he pulled apart his car. We were all at the sh- his little shop. Took everyone home, went out to go DoorDash. Car doesn't drive. Oh. Oh. 
Yeah. You want to know a secret about that, that whole thing? What is it? So, you know how everyone's like, how have you, you're working, like, how do you not have money for all this shit? Dude, the first, like, three months of when I, when I was started dishwashing there and doing all that kind of shit, I was making, like, $400 every two weeks. God damn. Yeah, y'all were like, dude, how are you working and all this shit? And, like, people were like, because you guys were really cool about it. You guys are great friends. Like, I don't, I don't owe you forever and a day for all that kind of shit you guys did for me. But, like, you guys don't remember, like, I still had to pay for my car, insurance, all that other kind of shit, right? Mm. And I was like, my paychecks were just keeping me afloat, and I was saving like fifty dollars every two weeks. God, damn. yeah, uh huh, four hundred dollars, four thirty, four forty. Man, yep. I would have the fuck. I was making like I was making like ten an hour. Well, how would I would how would I have ten an hour? And that's what I was making when I first started. Ten an hour. Now I'm the sous chef. Wow, shit. Ten. Yeah. I thought uh-huh. they were starting motherfuckers at at least 12. I didn't get that till like eight months later. Seven months later. God damn. Yeah. Fuck. So like when everyone was man, like. you should have joined the service side, man. You probably could have made bank. Think I could do that now? No. Yeah. No. Yeah, I don't think I could do it now. No. You got that kitchen smell in you. I know. You, that, that smile. That, that youthful smile that you had before. Dude, this area Go loves on. you for that shit, though, dude. Ugh. People ask me all the ah. time. Where'd Gio go? Ah. Where'd Gio at? Stop it. Ugh. What? I don't like that. Like what? It's so weird. It's like... it's a, it, Dude, it's it's now not, not necessarily a tourist spot, but like once Brandy Grant came and like gave us all these accolades on like Twitter and shit about where he was at, like it's been bussing. It's play, like it's wild shit now. Yeah, I don't know, it's that getting recognized shit for what doing a good job and being a staple and like actually being competent. Yeah, it's weird. It's see, it's I never expect that to be stand outish. See, see, I don't the, think I ever did anything. I was like, wow, you are amazing. It's like no, every shift I worked, I was almost fucking terrified. Well, see, here's the thing though, and this is one of the things that like I, I I'm reading about and like looking into a lot is the uh, the social contract people used to have before COVID, pre COVID, where you want to have a meal, right? You always have your Karens. You want to have a meal, tip twenty percent, right? Like, but you're you're nice to everyone. Like, there are human. They're going through shit. You're just genuinely just baseline. Yeah. However, post COVID, they're saying now, and I was talking about, about my, to my grandfather about this, you know, yesterday, or I guess yesterday, well, well Thanksgiving, so this won't come out uh, the day that I'm saying this, but um, basically, people don't treat everyone the same. They look at life differently because of everything that happened. They were inside. They were scared. They were not scared. They look at things differently. And I think people are happy to see someone who gives a fuck just in general and like are a genuinely good person. Like my mom all the time goes, Oh man, it's so we're not seeing Gio there. We loved him. And like, you know, people there all the time are like, Oh dude, we love like, uh, uh, what did, what did the one guys, I'll tell you, Thank like, you everybody. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you his name after this, but like, um, they're like, yeah, we love giving money. It was great. It felt like, it felt like we were like actually kind of given like, you know, it, it meant something. You know, I think people don't get that all the time. Like, if you go to Applebee's, not shitting on Applebee's, but it's like they, you, 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 you get what you get, right? And people are just there for a paycheck. But I think, yeah, you're there for a paycheck. But I think people enjoy the comic relief, the, the, the energy you have. And I think why these podcasts with you, especially, have gone done so well. Like I think, like the 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 Mercedes uh, demise. Mercedes demise. The the that day, I think I had a, like one thousand on launch. Speaking of which, or not one thousand, eleven thousand on launch. Did, do you know the story about how I fixed that fucking thing? No. Oh, oh, jeez. Oh. Don't let me derail you. No, you're good. You're, you're good. Kind of piping me up, and I'm I kind was of piping you right now. No, if I could blush. I'm I blushing. Just, I just think. I just, just think. If I could blush, I'm blushing. If you could put like some rosy cheek effects, sure, I got you. I got you. That'd be fucking. I got crazy. you. I can do that for you. But my point being is, I think people nowadays are shocked to see people give just a fuck. Not that you, you, you know what I'm saying. Like I feel like I should be default though. It, it, well, see, that's it a makes thing. Makes life so much more better when you know the person you're talking to is just hearing you. I think yeah. listening has is a lost art. Just being able to listen to somebody talk. Yeah. Instead of just trying to 
spit out the next fucking sequence and the conversation template that you have yeah. stored into your mind somewhere. Well, there's this thing that I learned back in high school. We used to do this Think of Life Skills conference hosted by Tom Stetcher, which is an amazing person. Um, and he's gone through a lot with, with his daughter that passed away. So I love you. I hope everything's going good if you are listening to this. But he taught us this thing, which I live by, and it kind of changed my life and how I interact with people forever, is you... Um, you uh what is it you listen so you don't like, like you're having a conversation right when i'm talking to you fuck you fuck, I'm a mo- <laughs> what do i look like to you? Dick. um i'm not looking to respond right like i'm looking to respond but i'm listening to you you are um i feel like you're fucking this up somehow. i am fucking it up I, I had it in my head but like when people have conversations they're so worried about like Oh, I'm going to say this. So whatever you're saying to me is nothing. I already have what I'm going to say once you're done. I'm listening to you. Like I'm seeking to understand what you're saying and then respond to what you're saying. Not just just... the fuck up. I have a better idea for that. Here's how you do it. I totally butchered that thing. I'm sorry, Tom. I love you forever. The conversations are like, like a special dance. Okay. With the reciprocity. I love that fucking word. You fucking went viral. Like when you talk to somebody, there's a wall. There's a wall right here. Okay. And our job as people who are conversing with each other is to somehow form this foundation of healthy conversations without blocking each other off. So we're putting a brick here. We're putting a brick here. I'm asking you how you're doing. You tell me about the porn you watch. I take that brick off because I'm not interested in your schmutt. <laughs> I had a, how's your mom doing? How's your family? Oh, you're doing good. And then we build this nice wall with a name signed on it showing us that we are humans who have the ability to communicate. What do you think about that? I think it's pretty good. I was all complete fucking horse shit and you swallowed it all. See, we're not communicating on a level in which we should. Why? You just fucking lied to me. How do you mean? What did I just say? That you are talking to people, you're actually understanding what they're saying. No, building fucking walls. No, but that's but but what I'm saying is, is you're listening to someone. Like okay, you go, oh this the sky is beautiful today. It was a green color. What'd you say? The sky is beautiful today. Before that, I don't remember. I'm fucking with you at this point. You you just you just not. Because 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 when you're speaking to me, right? Yeah. I'm not trying to get the next sentence out that I had in my head. You sure? Yes. Cheetos. What? Exactly. That's my point. It, uh, yeah. I didn't have anything to say because I'm 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 responding to you. Yeah. I'm not just uttering words out of my mouth because I want to speak. You if like you tell me a sentence and I I take a second, I I I hear what you're saying and I'm responding to what you're saying. Okay. I'm not just I'm not just saying things to to just utter words out of my mouth. We're having a conversation. I'm trying to seek to understand the things that divide us. Like, why does it have to be division? I'm not saying this division. That that, that, that was a quote from a uh, a script we used to say for uh, the Order of the Arrow. But <laughs> Boy Scouts. Um, oh, that your cult. It's, it's not a little cult. cult growing up. It's not a cult. That, that Order of the Arrow seems kind of cultish. It's not a cult. Did you have like a little ritual or ceremony? Yes. To induct you in in front of was a there fire. like a it was a set of rules and regulations that yes. you had to abide by in yes. order to be kept into the brotherhood. Yes. Are there secrets that you can't tell outside members? Yes. It looks sounds Are you bad. in there for life? Yes. Sorry, buddy. That's <sighs> fucking cult. The Lenny Lenape, their name was. Cultish. Anyways, point being is I think people nowadays are like, when you have a conversation, right? Yeah. They You go... You say you're talking about like cannolis, right? I'm fat. I like cannolis. My point being is, is mid, I'm mid food. Actually, cannolis are garbage. But keep going. Anyways, but my point being is, is like, I say cannolis trigger something in your brain, and you want to utter your next sentence because you want to get it out. Fucking disgusting. Exactly. There we you're go. You're not listening. I, but I did it. You're hear you. responding. But I know cannolis because it gives me a visceral, like, feeling in my stomach. Like, it's the Ew. best feeling in the world. Cannolis. Or disgusting. You know what's better than cannolis? What? The fact that we're having a conversation and we're listening to each other, man. There's nothing sweeter than that. I hate you. I hate you, too. Wow. Yeah. Ouch. I didn't mean that. Did I hurt your feelings? (laughs) 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 Fucking... 
<laughs> but yeah, I just, I think that was one of the things that you did well was like, either they, either you actually meant to, maybe you didn't. It definitely was a charade. That was definitely a exactly to people. But I think, but I think people took it as a genuine remark, and I don't think they get that a lot of the time. Yeah, because there's a level of like, you kind of give a fuck, and it's like they want to. They're, they they enjoy this. Like you make it fun for them. You joke around with them. You poke fun of them. You know who to. You can kind of gauge someone from only having a conversation with them for like thirty seconds and take their order. But mm-hmm. I think your read on people is very good. So you know how to respond to the dad, to the mom, to the kid, to the young adult that's in front of you. If they're if they're a younger crowd like you and me, you'll respond. You'll talk to them in a different way that you would talk to someone who's fifty. You know, and I think with you being able to gauge that, they might not be used to that. Where they might get someone that's your age, that's a server, that's a whatever kind of was was a server. Was then they're like, oh, well, you're just a dick. (laughs) So, oh, you're not gonna check on me. We're gonna see you standing by the server station. I'm not gonna lie. All this talk about my past job, man, it's kind of it's gonna give me fucking PTSD or some shit. Telling it's, you, it's just telling you the truth, man. You know, it's a that's a skill you can lose. The gift of gab. Yeah. The, how the fuck can it be a gift that you can lose it? That's like that's like getting a Christmas present and then the person who got it for you just snatched this shit. Of this. Ah, I think just kidding. I, th- I don't think you lose the gab, but I do think you can lose the aspect of, like, okay, prime example. I like I would I would comfortably say years ago when I was like an assistant teacher and all that kind of stuff, like when I was in school and all that kind of stuff. Mm. I think you could punch me in the face in certain regards and I'd apologize. I was very easygoing and like, you know, I but I think now that side of me is totally done. No. Definitely not. You think I'm still a little teddy bear? Yeah. yeah of There's no way. Yeah. Of course. So it doesn't look for an excuse. Yeah, there was I forgot who I was talking to about this, but I think we were at Shirley's Crip one time and somebody I think it was Gavin told me this. Like Gavin like smacked you in the back of the neck or something. He did tell me this, yeah. And the dude came up to him and was like, dude, you hit him? Dude, I wouldn't hit that guy. I'm scared of him. When he told me that, I, I fucking farted. I was laughing so hard. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, you're afraid to hit Matt? Yeah. How? how? How the fuck are you terrifying the people? I, well, see, the thing is, And then it's like, well, since we know you, we grew yeah. up with you, and scrapping was just shit that we did. Yeah. There's, there's no fear. There was, I think there was a couple of times that we were a fraction of a second close to snapping each other's shit up. There's been times. But I think that also is probably the reason, like, like, and, and, and I'm very frank saying this. I do trust, like, you, Gavin, Cody, but, like, Kevin, like, there's a level of trust that I have with you guys that I have with no other human being. Oh. And I'm not even being weird, and like even my my family, or whatever it is, but like there is a level of trust that I have with you guys, mm. where I no one else in the world that I think has that, and I think that is different That's than other people. unique bond. I think there's people that have that, that that kind of bond, but I think other people would look at someone like me. It happens all the time. Oh, you're so big and strong. You you know you look so angry. But then here's Geo giving me a side jab. I'm like, you fucking stop. Like, we're not breaking out into a fight, but it's like, you're not afraid to, you know, poke the bear, you know, or whatever you want to say. Or I'm like, or I might, you know, give like a smack on the ear, like pull your earlobe. Oh, they're both big dudes. But it's like, in my head, I'm like, we both have this respect where like, we know it's joking. It might turn into like a little physical altercation, but like a joking altercation. Other people might see it as, oh shit, World War III is about to happen. You know what I'm saying? I feel like, I feel like if there was a problem... And, like, Ben had us roll up to something that people would freak out. But I feel like if when off all you guys came into my house it was on a regular Tuesday, but, oh, word, big humans, you know? Like, I feel like the perception to actuality differentiates b- b- between people. Those are big words. I'm just saying, like, to what you're exposed to. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's an interesting thing. I'm just, out of curiosity, I just want to know. Who do you think is scarier, me or you? See, it's different because in my head, you can box. You, I think you can knock me out if we box. But I know how to wrestle. I choked you out once. I'll do it oh, again. we're not doing this. I wrestled <laughs> five people before I wrestled you. They were all like but, a buck 
50, eat it. You got choked out. He was a black belt. He literally has a black belt with like a stripe or two. All right, whatever, whatever. We're not doing this. My point being is, is like, I can, I can take you right now. No, you won't. Easy no, peasy. Want to bet? Squeezy. Dude, we'll do it oh, on camera. Yeah. We'll do it on camera. Let's do it. All right. Fuck it. You asked. I don't want to. You get up first. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, but my point being is, is like, I can put 360 pounds over my head. Yeah. And it's like, people see that and they'll be like, oh, fuck. But I think you and I are different in a lot of that regards where it's like, I don't think anyone's scarier, but in my head, it's like, I don't know. It's hard for me to say because I know you, but I feel like. Like and I and I get this all the time. It's like, oh, you're a big scary dude. Then they get to know me, and they're like, oh, you're not that all that tough. I'm like, yeah, but I'll still kill you. I think it's a little different now, though, with my yeah. demeanor and work. But like, I mean, I don't know. I I feel like I I'm definitely unique because of my job and because of people that I meet on a regular basis. I am uniquely aware of my size and what people think about me when they see me. Is that concerning at all? No. Do you feel self-conscious in any way? Actually, if anything, it makes me feel better about myself. Uh, yeah. Nice. Yeah. Um, you should you should give a like um, social media a try, like make a podcast or something. I, I don't think like, I, don't, I, I don't I don't think I could do it. Yeah, nobody would fucking watch it. Yeah. Um, a little quick tip for everyone out there. A little sidebar. Um, with everything kind of going on with Spotify and this podcast and things like that. We're, I think we're going to be moving. Uh, we're talking about Spotify. We're going to be moving onto the platform just totally them. Ooh. Yeah. Oh man, does that mean you're gonna have to start doing some ad breaks here? Yeah. And there? Who's sponsoring? Um, I emailed uh Morgan and Morgan to do the bank. No, nah, it's like the uh, Morgan and Morgan. They're like uh, uh lawyers and shit to do like a uh, a mid roll. So like middle of the podcast, it'll just be me talking about them and shit like that. Damn, can you get like some people? I need like some clothing lines. Maybe we'll see what happens. Kevin, Kevin Hart got something going on. I see his ass all over fucking Instagram. Kevin Hart and Scrubs and shit. Like the Red we'll Bull, see. Monster, Ghost. Well, Rain, I'm I'm now a uh, yeah, I'm, Rain. Now, I'm now I'm now an ambassador with them. What the fuck does that mean, ambassador? Like, so like if you, you if you use code Lapore all uppercase, you can save ten percent off your purchase. Oh. <laughs> oh. Code Lapore? Code Lapore. Hey, congrats. But um but yeah, no, like just kind of like uh, out of that sidebar. Jocko Go is a completely better energy drink. No, of course it is. No, it's not. Let's test your ambassading. You know my proclivity. To Jocko what, goes. What what BCAs does Jocko goes have? I don't fuck cares about BCAs. You want clean energy with no downfall? Wait There's, a second, hold on. I'm not here doing ads for Jocko Go. I ain't getting paid for it. Yeah, you know what? Rain is delicious. I like that one red flavor they got in that one can. Tastes delicious. Watermelon berry. Yeah. You know, well, yeah, I like the watermelon one and the berries. <laughs> 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 Fucking berries. Yo, you, you, oh, where the fuck were we? You said something completely racial. And it blew people's minds. So, like, for me, I'm used to it because that's just how you are or whatever it is. Yeah. But someone handed you watermelon. There was a here. Someone else. We, they cut, cut, like, watermelon. You went, yeah, hand it to the black guy. And the people were like, we don't, they don't know what to say. <laughs> but we're all cracking up because we know you're cracking a joke. Was it Jimmy's house? Where the fuck were we? But you got, you got like, there was watermelon out. And like, they handed it to you, unironically. You know what I'm talking about? A dupe. Yeah. I don't remember where it was. But you said something. And you made it sound like hardly racial. And we're all laughing because we know you weren't making it that way. But they were like, oh, what do we do? Because that's a layup. I'm going to dunk it. Yeah, yeah it's okay. On, it's White make... guilt. Yeah. Yeah. You, uh, s- you smell it? It smells like fucking raisins and potato salad. Oh, God. It's fucking disgusting, by it the way. It is disgusting. And green bean casserole. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah, I like green bean casserole. You like green bean casserole? That bad? It's, it's disgusting. Love green beans. It's fucking green beans. Love green beans. Who likes green beans? You ever had cream corn? No. You're an awful human being. I have no teeth. I fucking eat cream corn for it. Give me corn on the cob. Put some butter on it. Mm. I could go with some corn on the cob right now. I love corn. What? Guess that means you're corny. Oh, my God. <laughs> I'm not uh, doing this today with you. Uh, I swear to God. Uh, Speaking of which, when I was fixing my car, I think I saw him. Saw who? God. Oh, yeah. So, 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 okay, tell me the story. Oh, fuck. 
We yeah. were on that tangent so, like thirty minutes ago. What we started? I started. Me and Eddie started working on it. Oh, I gotta reach. I gotta see how he's doing. I haven't July. July, yeah, because it was right after I resigned. My car broke down the next day. Dude, that okay? Fucking real quick, hilarious. Real quick, little tangent. Mm. I felt so bad. Why? Because when mine went down, I was financially stable, but then my cash cow that I was working was with my car, and I remember how much it sucked. Mm-hmm. Like I, I. I'll be kidding. I had thoughts of like actually just fucking ending it on me. This sucks. This is awful. <laughs> I, I knew exactly how I was gonna do it too. Clean this up. What do you mean? Clean it up. What do you mean clean you it up? You're here talking about quitting your oxygen addiction. Anyways, clean anyways, it up. Anyways, anyways. But when I heard about that, yeah. you told me, I was like, yo, that sucks. I thought you were I was I thought you were gonna show up the next day at work. No. No, no. It it was it was it seemed I've been I think I've been blessed with the gift of just being able to just handle shit. Yeah. It doesn't affect me. I'm going to yeah. fix it. I know me. I'm going to fix it. Yeah. This one. This. Uh, ah, fuck this car. Yeah. So, okay. So, you got the part. So Okay. Let's let's rewind it. Okay. I get the transmission. Transmission comes in. It's okay. the wrong transmission. Uh. The dude didn't specify what model year it was for. Mm. It's the wrong transmission. But I was like, uh, I'm not returning it because that's too much work. So... I had to pull the other one out. Easier said than done. You wonder why? Because after we got everything disassembled, I forgot to take out some bolts in the torque converter. Yeah, you were telling me that. Stupid me. Take those out, transmission drops. Now, unbeknownst to me, transmissions are fucking heavy. Yeah. They're a couple hundred pounds. Yep. I didn't have a jack at the time. It was one of them transmission jacks. So literally, look at me, America. I'm on my back. in my In the community parking lot outside my crib. It's at night. I have it on jack stands. I have my jack up. You can move the microphone a little better if you want. Turn it like this. No, go like this. Go like this. Go like this. Fuck it. We going hands on. Okay. All right. I'm on my back. Underneath the car. It's on a slope, by the way. <laughs> what is happening? <laughs> Kevin was with me. He's like, dude, you all right? I'm like, yeah, I'll be good. I dropped the transmission. Now, there's no smooth way of doing it, so I had to, like, pick my feet up. <laughs> And clamp the back of the transmission. And I had to fucking wrestle it out of place. Easy. Except it slammed on my leg. <laughs> yeah. So there's not much clearance. There's about a foot clearance for me to slide anything out before I, you know, I slide towards the front out the curb. Yeah, yeah. So I'm on my back. Transmission's on my leg. And sooner or later, this shit starts feeling numb. Oh. So geez. we take it out. That's good. We got that. Okay. So here comes the fun part. Oh, fuck. How the fuck do I get a transmission that's not made specifically for my year make and model to fit? Now, my genius idea was... Shove it in there? Nope. You take the bell housing to the good one. Or okay. not the good one, the bad one. The old one. Yeah. You swap it with the new one. Swap all those fucking cutch plates over. Mind you, all this done at 10 o'clock in my garage because I got a fucking note from the HOA saying, hey... You can't be working on your shit in the fucking parking lot. So I was like, well, I can get this done today. So I literally took it out, swapped all the internals. Easy-ish. So I think I fucked up a couple of times. I'll tell you when. I put everything together, put it in the car. Boom, we're good. No, we're not. Because car's not starting. The shit's not going in gear. So I fuck something up. I take it out again. I snapped the fucking fuel pump in the tranny. Damn. Took that out, put the correct torque converter in. Boom. Everything's hooked together. Sweet. It's still on the ramp, still in the jack stands. Let's add trans fluid. Because mind you, I started this at 7 p.m. I didn't go to sleep that night. I was literally wrenching underneath that fucking car for 12 hours. And I had work the next day. This is fun, dude. And you were working, at, you were working on cars, too. Yeah, I was working at CJ's. Yeah. And I'm like, put trans fish in the Oh, sweet. Transmission fluid. I'm dead tired. Put transmission fluid in. And then I'm hearing like this trickling noise. I'm like, what the fuck you is this noise? To. Fucking, I didn't screw the fucking, the linkage in the back. So trans fluid is pissing out the back of the fucking transmission. I'm sitting here laughing my ass off. 
because I'm like, we we fucking up now. This is this this ain't gonna get done. Get it towed to Mike's. As it's getting towed to Mike's shop, I forgot to move the bucket that I put oh to catch the transmission fucking. fluid, pissing out of the back of the transmission fluid. So when the tow truck down, we're pushing off the ramp. All I hear is crunch, slide. I'm like, what the fuck's that noise? Oh, please don't tell me the transmission fell. Nope. It's a fucking bucket with like two liters of transmission fluid just pissing out. I'm like, well, fuck. Cat litter, towel, good. Take it to the shop. Mike's like, yeah, dude, you put everything together. It runs. You just didn't put the starter in right. Who? Fuck it. At least it runs now. Drive it off of Mike's. Drive it off his shop. Oh, no. Uh, There's a lot of shit that I forgot to put back together. So, if you ever plan on driving a car, make sure the coolant line to the oh engine's actually Oh, my God. Attached. Oh, my fucking God. Because I'm driving it. I'm like, what the oh my God, fuck's that dude, noise? It's overheating. I'm like, why is steam coming out this oh. motherfucker? And I'm driving along the road. I'm like, it don't sound good. Oh. Pull in. Pop the hood. It's steaming like a motherfucker now, like a sauna. Pop it open. Oh, with the hose is in the clamp. Yeah, okay. Screw it back together. Oh, the air box isn't on correctly. Oh, a couple teeth. Ah, fuck it. Snap, snap. So currently, the car runs. Uh, the drive shaft is still missing a bolt. Oh. The transmission still missing about two bolts holding it to the engine. Oh. The exhaust is hanging off. Duct tape. Uh, I think I need to do my brakes, but I mean, if we're talking about order of operations, it's important. I think you need a car to fucking drive in order to yeah. need the brakes. Who would have fucking thunk? Everything else works. Why don't you just do it here? Yeah. Yeah. But no, you, you have a driveway with a slope. This is a whole other side of the garage. Yeah, but you gotta clean that out. I think I ask you to do that. If you and I did it, would probably take us at most a half an hour. Oh, yeah, it would. Definitely would. Like, I, I know what I have to do. Yeah. But I got the bike. Okay. And fuck, that thing is awesome. Yeah. That was pretty cool today. Little caveat, him and I were planning on doing it after work. He shows up back at uh, at my work, and there's this little area where you can walk out the side door. And I guess he saw me walking out of work. I peeped him. I'm like, what is he doing here? We're going we to drink or something like that? I walk out the door. He is faced up with me with his bike, head headlights on me. I'm like, ah, oh, this is where I die. This is it. This is where I get uh, bike launched oh, into man, my face. Drop the clutch. And just fucking... <laughs> you got to get one. They are amazing. I thought about it. I just, I don't know. You want to know what got me to like actually sit down and like think, oh, let me buy a bike. <sighs> Cody and Dylan. They were telling me a while ago when they were get when they got theirs. Yeah, they, they were, were gonna they were gonna teach me. It was outside of cycle. They were like, hey, come you know check this out. There's a little like bike show going on. I'm like, fuck yeah. Uh, I think I'm not sure if Dylan or Cody brought it, but they had like this little like. Mini like shit pocket dirt bike. Yeah, they they, 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 bike. they have a crack, little, crack small, Yeah, a little small joint like frame motor. Yeah, I've seen it. I'm fucking riding this thing around a lot. And I'm like, holy fuck, this is awesome! Like, this is all my childhood dreams together. Yo, on a fucking like motor, going fucking vroom vroom, and me swerving in the parking lot and shit, doing like trying to do wheelies and the suspension bottoming out. That's awesome. So I was like, fuck, yo. Damn, it's either like I spend the money to get the car fixed, smart thing to do, or I buy a motorcycle and enjoy it, which is what I ended up doing. Well, I mean, it kind of works twofold. You have two ways of getting around, and then one and a half, technically. I don't trust that fucking Merc to take me to the hospital if I needed to. Damn. Which is wild because what two months before you were done, you drove it to Colorado. Yeah, and then the Georgia, and then the Georgia. Yeah, you know what's crazy? Uh, a little caveat: I was hoping and praying the entire time I was driving my car that that transmission was going to hold up. Oh yeah, there was a couple of points there where, where, where I was sitting in there like, "Fuck, this is going to be weird." Yeah, because like it was brand new trans. Drove it around a little bit here and there. Got to the mileage that I needed to get it to get it to run. And because there's a certain amount of miles you have to drive it to get it fully oh, lubed up, lubed up, whatever it was. I don't know the actual terminology, but I'm like, fuck, dude. 
25 hours total of driving. And I was like, well, everything looks good so far. You still have a couple of hiccups here and there when you drive it? No, I have to. So the thing now, I have to get a new um, trans, transition box, I think it's called. Sure. Um, that I have to get. I have to get my brakes done and my rotors. But other than that, it runs pretty good. I think the person, there was only one owner that had the car before me, and she replaced part of the engine. Ooh. Yeah. God damn. So, you should get a Kia Soul, a green one. <laughs> you just, didn't you say in the last one that we did that we chucked? Uh, I don't know what you're talking about. Okay. I still have a recording on the first one. She had a green Kia Soul, and maybe a Nissan Maxima. Yikes. You'd be golden. No, thank you. I think my next car is going to be a Toyota 4Runner. Your next car is going to be a Dodge Caravan. No. It's going to be menstrual red. I'm going to kill myself. Sure, after you get the car. Don't just fuck what you do. I want to, I, I do, I do, it's going to sound really kind of like, uh, like girly-ish, but I do want like a fucking. Jeep, Wrangler, yeah, white, white, lifted. Lifted. Let's get a Charger. Get a Challenger. I would like, I would like a Challenger, but hear me out though, right? Buick. <laughs> I feel like you could be a brand ambassador of Buicks. Oh, my God. Stop. How cool would it be? My name's Matthew Joseph Lepore, and I'm going to show you this new 2023 Buick LaCrosse. Oh, also, um, Conicelli, stop calling me. Yeah, Conicelli, stop Anyways, calling him. Um, But no, like I, I think it'd be so cool to like drive down to the beach and you doors off and all that shit. That'd be pretty cool. I don't know. Why? I think it's cool. It just seems extra. To get a motorcycle at that point. Cheap energy. Yeah. There's no doors. Is one of those spiders? Yeah, I could see you on the... Um, Harley. I'm thinking more like a Honda. Like a, like, a, like a Honda Cruiser. Maybe. 1100 cc's, heavy. Mm. A little chopper. Get you one of them half shell helmets with like that fucking pointy thing on the top of it. Because you have a proclivity to headbutt shit. I don't headbutt anything I was talking about. You sure about that? Yeah. All right, fine. Fuck it. Fair enough. You, yeah, I think everybody's got a bike. Maybe. This is going to be like that one fucking, I'm going to be like, like that one vegan friend who's like, well, you really should just start eating cabbage and just trying to get all of y'all on bikes. See, yeah, my, thi- my thing with bikes is It'd like, be awesome. I feel like I will fuck something up. Oh, you will definitely crash. You will definitely fall off it's not a matter of if it's a matter of when and then hopefully you are good enough to delay that when just a little bit more tell you man once you get on it you're not worried about the the falling part doesn't matter because you think about it right if you sing on 45 and you fall there's a good chance you will really maim your shit anything higher than that you're probably dead so there's really nothing to worry about that's, that's it's silver lining, right? Like imagine parachuting, right? You're doing your first parachute. You're doing tandem, and then your 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 uh, I don't know what it's called. Your back buddy. I don't know the correct terms for the person you go tandem sky jump sky jumping sky diving jumping, free falling plummeting. So whatever the fuck you want to call it, the verb for it. If they tell you like, hey, everything's gonna be fine, and you're still scared shitless, would you be okay with that? They yeah. say, hey, everything's going to be fine. Yeah. Or if they tell you, like, hey, look, if sh- if shit goes tits up and we start spinning, we'll be unconscious before we hit the ground. To me, second option sounds better. Because, like, if the worst case scenario happens, we will both be passed out and then hit the ground. And same thing on a bike. Like, going slow is the scary part. If you're doing, like, a buck 20, have not that I have ever gone above the speed Have you limit. allegedly gone above 20? <laughs> Oh, I'd be terrified. I accidentally. Think. think about it. Felony. Speed. Felony. Felony. Speed limit. It's that easy. It's so fun. Just going. I'd be fucking scared shitless. You'd love it. I'd probably The would. wind blowing. I mean, be it. If you're hauling ass and like. Some, like you hit a bump. Oops, okay. I heard the back wheel go off the ground a little bit. 
or like you're leaning, you're really leaning into it, and the wind kind of blows you, and your bike starts to wiggle a little bit. Okay, that's sketchy. Or you're going down the highway, and then your fucking handlebars just start shaking like that. Does that happen to you? Oh yeah, it's happened. Oh, I gotta do it. There's been there's been a whole array of. I would sell that little the next day. But no, this uh, that that fucking pen dot guide really helped. That like that that the little study guy you have to do in order to pass your permit test. All that shit helped. I remembered all of it because mm. I had to like. I didn't study the book. I just studied the answers, and like all the answers made sense. Huh. So, uh, apparently, if you put too much weight in the front handlebars, you'll fuck up the equilibrium or the centrifugal balance of the shit, and then your fucking shit will start shaking like this. So, off of no experience riding a bike, if your handlebars start shaking, what do you think you should do? Hold on tighter. Nope, the wrong answer. That'll just you just get uh, fucking let go ejected. of the let go of the. It's to relieve pressure from the front to get that suspension less. Mind you, I could be completely bullshitting. I think you have to like let go a little bit, like don't put as much pressure towards the front, so the back wheel can kind of regain some traction, so the front wheel can catch up. Uh, rotational wise, you should be good. Uh. So you never want to death grip it, because then all the goofy shit happens. They call it a death grip if you hold it too close to the inside of the handlebars. Like, the shit'll start getting twisted. So hold it light on the outside. Literally, if you're going fast, you're not really holding on tight to anything. You're kind of just using like three fingers on each hand. Like, hold the brakes and throttle. It's just that. And then lift off. Because you don't need to crank it. Like, you can test the throttle on my bike. There's not much like power you need to get that fucking thing maxed out to 100. It's that. Mm. Like, that. It's simple, easy. Motherfucker. You gotta get a bike, dude. I'll think about it. I'll think about Fuck it. Fuck the thinking. The thinking you just not get it. I'm trying to I'm trying to help you make bad financial choices, but <laughs> fuck the fuck the studio upgrades. Fuck the you no, know, get rain, get Jocko Go, get Monster, get OnlyFans, get everybody giving you cash. We'll even hit up Yammy Noob on YouTube. He's a What's moto, Yammy Noob. He's a uh, moto vlogger, I, uh, okay. I guess. Get him on here. Get you like a Kawasaki or a Ducati or an Aprilla. I guess you want an Aprilla. Mm. Just fast, cool bikes. Come on, man. Come join the come join the gang. I'll think about it. No, you won't. But one thing I'm thinking about, we do gotta get you gotta get this thing wrapped up. Oh fuck, we didn't even hit the chat GPT shit. No. Fuck. Yeah. Imagine if we actually stayed clean on the first one. Dude, this would have been like the longest podcast you ever did. Yeah, we're probably we're at an hour and seventeen in right now. God damn. Yeah, it's currently twelve forty two in the morning. Sweet. I gotta be at the airport in two hours. Damn. Nice. But seriously, I really appreciate you coming out and doing this all day. I don't, I don't all know, night. I don't know you have to All night. All night. Yeah, there you yeah. go. Cause I did that with Ben. I did, I had to take him to the airport at three in the morning. Yeah, the things you do for brothers. Things you do for brothers. But if you guys want to get a hold of Giovanni Guarna, your uh Say your my name properly. Guarna. No, the first name. Guarna. Giovanni. Giovanni. Nope. You've known me for how long? Get Giovanni. No. Giovanni. No. What? Say it say it again. Giovanni. There you go. I know how your dad says it. I know how I say it. Say it. Say it how my dad would say it. Giovanni. I can't. I can't do. He's a thick accent. <laughs> that motherfucker. Giovanni. Giovanni. <laughs> yo, he. Yo, I Guarna. ate the fuck out get, of that get fish. That, get that. Get that. little tongue roll on it. Guarna. Giovanni. Guarna. Giovanni Guarna. Guarna. There you go. Guarna. There you go. Guarna. He got a thick Italian. Yo, I thought Carmine was. Don't his... say thick Italian and mention my fucking father, please. Thick Stop Italian. It. You that fish you gave me that day though? Oh. Yeah, he caught yeah. it fresh, you know? Mm-mm-mm. Yo, he is the the embodiment of like an actual like straight up like Italian, like, hey, I'm gonna take care of you here. Take food, 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 manja, manja, manja. Like that's Yeah. Cause he's got too much eating all fucking eat it. So we're trying to push off food. It's good. What did we drink that day? What was that drink? Sambuca. Sambuca. Oh, that's my shit. You went, you went here. I got you some. Thought it was like shot down. He goes, "What the fuck?" I'm like, "Yo, my bad, dude." You know, technically, I'm a first generation American. No, your mom. Yeah, even if she's still like 
born in America, since my dad is not born in America, and I'm his offspring. Technically, I'm a first generation American. That's kind of wild. That crazy? That is crazy. You know how many fucking colleges I could have put that on my goddamn application and got like a f- huh? Why didn't you? They fucking know. I know. Definitions at the time. Mm. Man, I should took advantage. Should have used the part that I'm part Cherokee or something. Should have been like Grant or something. They could have gave me some casino bucks or something. Yeah, they would have. They, they they checked that out pretty heavily though now. They do. Oh yeah. Damn, because I spit oh, in that yeah. tube for 23 chromosomes. or don't know the fuck. The, oh, the 23 and me. Yeah. Which I think 23 might, and me? might be a scam. Because apparently I'm 13% British Irish. And I'm not sure if you can tell, but I don't think there ain't no 13% British Irish. That's pretty Irish white to me. Huh? Really? Oh, yeah. What part? Like the island, Islandic, Islandic, I, I, uh, Icelandic. Completely different fucking region. I don't know, dude. I don't know things. I'm delirious now. I'm I'm hammered. How you didn't finish your drink? That's my third one. You remember we we did 37 minutes mm. before this last one, and I finished when we were upstairs. Shit. Yeah. Fuck. Uh, oh yeah. Uh, if you want to get a hold of me. Oh yeah. Forgot about uh, that. Sure. <laughs> let's let's wrap this up so you can <laughs> well, go man. watch your midget schmutt. Oh my god. Oh, you be started with that. But yeah, guys. Seriously. Every time he's on here, everyone always messages me or something like, like you guys will see the videos. I know everyone remembers the one with the uh, the Elmo, <laughs> um, and that TikTok. Uh, uh, I think it was only on TikTok for like two months, and I got an account violation. You're welcome. Thanks, man. Preach. He's actually with the the things that I have to say before the podcast. He's one of the people that I bring up, which is kind of funny. I, think I told you that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so. Giovanni, uh, no, I think it's Gio and Vani, right? On your Instagram? Yeah, you know, if you don't get lazy with editing, you can just put it where my finger is. It's actually probably already under you, but now it's going to be up there because you told me to put it there. Bullshit. I swear on my life. What about right here? Probably, I could put it there, too. What about right here? In there. Okay. That's cool. That's pretty cool. That's editing shit. Yeah. Fucking yeah. awesome, dude. It's so cool. I was joking that this is like a massive TV behind me, but it's just a massive green screen. It is. Yeah. yeah. I like it. it. Have you seen what it looks like now? No, it's literally an ocean in the BMC. Like it looks like a, like a little like window. Oh fuck! I can't swim. Why are you putting me next to an ocean? You can swim. I know I can swim. Anyways, guys, thank you for watching. Uh, sorry it's been the last like two weeks. It's been a hectic couple weeks, and uh, uh, kind of getting this stuff for the holidays as well. But we're back in action. We are back, and what better to start kick it off and get things rolling with Mister Giovanni Guarna? Yeah, yeah. Thank you, my friend. Thank you, buddy. Until next time. I love you, man. I love you too, man. Suck my fucking dick. I'm, I'm so what the f- You thought we were doing one take. How funny of you. Hey, we're done, America.